Good morning everybody from Tokyo Station. It's an impressive building you have to admit but uh, you couldn't believe millions of people pass through there every day. It really doesn't look that big. But uh, underground it certainly is big. There's so many lines for normal trains, uh, express trains, the Shinkansen bullet trains and from the station we are walking down the mall if I turn the camera around and heading to the Imperial Palace, which is just a short walk away. No doubt they will be uh, waiting my arrival, where they'll offer me a cup of tea and the fine delicacies that Japan has to offer. Now it's a uh, peak period in Japan at the moment, morning peak period and we are in central Japan that's why the uh, the main train stations there and as I keep saying in all my videos it's not as busy as what you think it would be look at the roads they're pretty much empty you do occasionally get the little spot of uh, congestion but it is really really rare and if there is any congestion it only lasts for like a minute or so and then it's all back to normal let's just uh, look back there at Tokyo Station I know the Sun was in the real bad place We've got a few things happening today, so there'll be a few videos. If it's the first time that you're on my YouTube and you like the video, why not subscribe and check out all my other videos? Today, if uh, all goes to plan, we're going to be um, going to the uh, Tokyo TV Tower. That's the big red one that everyone knows about. Uh, but it's no longer in use as a TV tower, that was the analog tower. And then we'll go to the new Sky Tree, which is the digital TV tower. Both, no doubt, worth looking at. One of the main roads through Tokyo. Again, as I say, not as busy as you think considering I come from a city of just you know a million people and it's gridlock it's 30 million people and the roads are like this it's pretty good here we go have a look over that way And uh, we are here, the Imperial Palace, or the outskirts of it. Here's someone coming, there they go. Also today, if we've got time, we're going to be going on the uh, Tokyo tram and the Tokyo uh, monorail. And there's a special little cafe we're going to. If you're a train lover, like I am, uh, you'll want to check out the cafe we're going to a little bit later on because it will give you the best views of trains in the heart of Tokyo. Trust me. Turn around, camera. Turn around, that's it. This is my new camera I, I purchased this to bring away on this trip. And uh, although it's going okay, it doesn't like the cold weather. So pressing the button sometimes just doesn't quite work. 
and sometimes it even points in the wrong direction but I think it's literally just the weather it is a bit cold it's, well, it's warming up as we're going down Japan in Sapporo of course it was snowing as you see here in Tokyo there is no snow here I certainly haven't got my thermals on anymore um, but you still do need your big thick jacket and a pair of gloves which I forgot to bring today everybody exercising but it's so trustworthy and honest here in Japan and Tokyo you can just leave your stuff there no one's gonna touch it Waiting for the lights. Look how quiet the roads are. Here we go. If you do have to watch anything in um, Tokyo, it's the bike riders. Not so much that they, they cause havoc, but uh, if you're wandering around in a daydream, like I usually do, all of a sudden uh, you're walking straight towards a, a bike that's zooming down the footpath. There you go, that's Tokyo Station down there. And I'm guessing this is the start of the palace grounds that's why there's all the policemen here in their funny little cars their cars are so funny you think if they ever had to chase anybody in one of those little cars And we'll come back in a minute once I figure out how to get in there. Okay, I know how to get in now, but we had to walk past these little police cars. <laughs> they are so funny. I don't... I've, I've never seen uh, one going fast yet. But then again, they don't seem to chase people because here seems to be a very... Honest place. Ah, there's the camera going funny again. I told you it points at weird directions now and then. <laughs> See, we go, we're going into the Imperial Palace for a little tour. We need our passport and uh, we're given a number. And once we go in, we're, uh, we're not allowed to leave the tour until it ends. So I'll try to film as much of it as we can. There's a lot of people in the tour, as you can imagine. Uh, but it should be fun.
So here we are in like a holding bay uh, before the tour. We've had to fill our forms, show our passports, um, and do security checks. This area was quite close to a bay and many rivers were flowing through, which made it a perfect hub for transportation and distribution of goods. Around the 12th century, a clan named Edo had entered entered Edo and met, entered Edo and uh, and in the mid 15th mid 15th mid 15th century the first Edo castle was was constructed by the by the Ota Dokan. In the year 1590, a prominent daimyo, feudal lord Tokugawa Ieyasu, had entered Edo and made his headquarters here, which soon became the political center of Japan. Ieyasu was appointed shogun, the general, by the emperor in Kyoto. Kyoto was the capital of Japan then. He and his, descend he, he and his descendants, the Tokugawa shoguns, had ruled Japan for more than 260 years. Then in the year 1868, Edo Castle was peacefully handed over to the new government founded under Emperor Meiji, the great-grandfather of our current emperor. This event is known as Meiji Restoration. Edo was renamed Tokyo at that time, and the Edo Castle was later renamed Kokyo, the Imperial Palace. Thank you for your attention. And thank you for waiting. We're ready to start the tour now. So if you'd like to participate in English guided tour, please proceed to the entrance door and wait for me outside. I'll be happy to be your guide today. Thank you. So we're about to start the English tour, but before then, just heard that it's the Emperor's birthday today, 59th birthday. So we're uh, celebrating the tour on his birthday. So I'd like to adjust the volume before we start. Uh, people in the back, can you hear me well? Is it too loud or too low? Just, you know, just good? Okay. So, let me remind you, please remember to always follow me. Okay, walk behind me uh, for your security reasons. And please keep to the left hand side when you walk, keep to the left hand side of the street. Okay. Because it's Saturday today, the traffic is less than usual, but sometimes the uh, vehicles, uh, trucks, and police cars are passing by, so please be careful. Okay. As we go into the street now, Okay, you noticed a western style building to your right. It was constructed in 1921 and used to be the Emperor's Privy Council. We call it Suimitsu Inn. Okay. Now it's used as an office building for Imperial Guard Headquarters. Okay, this is the white line here and please keep to the left hand side of this white line. Okay, okay. Uh, behind you, okay, if you look to the left, on the wall, I raise it to the Kikyomon here, which we have entered here earlier this morning. If you look at the stones on the wall here, you can find some kind of markings. Can you find any markings like that? Right there, circle with a cross in the middle. Can you yeah. see? Okay. Okay, actually, uh, this cross, this cross is a Japanese character, kanji, meaning number 10. Okay? Markings like them are called kamon. Kamon is the family crest. This particular kamon, family crest, uh, belongs to one daimyo, the feudal lord, called Shimazu from Satsuma, which is now Kagoshima Prefecture. Tokugawa Shogun mobilize daimyo, the feudal laws from all over Japan to expand and keep up the maintenance of Edo Castle. Those markings on the wall demonstrated which daimyo, the feudal lord, was in charge of the particular part of the construction. Okay? So, we're going to the next spot. And during the course, it's a one-hour walking tour. If you have any question, 
Uh, please don't hesitate to ask me anything. I will uh, be happy to try to answer your question and share the answer with everyone. <laughs> Now we are turning into the left hand side around the corner. It's really beautiful today. The yeah, sky is so blue. And this cave, the watchtower is really nice. I guess the blue sky. That we wait here temporarily to adjust the line. Just see that everyone is following. Okay, meanwhile you can take pictures. It's slowly to uh, follow me. Uh, I'll uh, be stopping around here. If you, if you like to be in the sun or in the shade. <laughs> It stands on the southeastern corner of Honmaru. Honmaru means the main area, the most important core area of the Edo Castle. Okay. And by the way, this Honmaru is now, uh, now changed into the palace's east garden and it's open to public. You can still visit. Even after the store, it's open until 4 o'clock uh, today. And the last time entry is 3 30, uh, it's free of charge. And there is a uh, uh, tour guide available is, uh, by a volunteer. It's Saturday today, so to a tour goes so from 1.30. Uh, you can just, uh, if you are there, <laughs> there is a tour guide, a uh, volunteer guide. Uh, it's available in English. Okay. Where was I? <laughs> okay. So the name Fujimi Yagura is uh, Mount Fuji Viewing Tower. Mount Fuji is visi was visible from the tower then, but not anymore because of the high-rise buildings of today's Tokyo. Mount Fuji is about 100 kilometers to the west. West is that direction. Okay, and so, so the during sh Tokugawa Shogunai, the Shogunai, the generals, will enjoy the view, what a view of Mount Fuji, and also enjoy the spectacular sight of fireworks at Shimida River. Shimida River is two, uh, two kilometers. 
to the southeast uh, direction. Okay. So the stone wall here, the 50 meter tall, and the tower built it up is 60 meters in height. The stone walls were constructed in 1606 by the order of samurai retainer called Sakato Kiyomasa. Okay. And after hundreds of years and so many earthquakes, the stone wall remains still intact. Uh, like you, uh, like the other stone wall we saw at the beginning, you can you can find a common the family quest on the several stones here. So if you can, if you have a good camera lens or super good eyesight, maybe you can spot one from where you stand up. No? Anyway, uh, on the on the way back, we'll be passing through on the other side of the street, so you have a closer view then. Edo repeatedly suffered from fire hazards. And during the Great Fire, which happened in 1657, many buildings were burned down, including, including the main dungeon, the main tower of Edo Castle. This tower here was rebuilt two years later, in 1659. But they never reconstructed the uh, Edo Tower, the main tower, because they, they thought uh, they found the nation so peaceful that they thought, they thought that it was not necessary to have strong fortification. And, there, and actually, during almost 300 years of Edo period, there was no major battle which took place at the Edo Castle. Okay. Now we go on around the corner. Okay. I had it a bit time. Okay, not too cold. Okay, this is good. Yes. Were you surprised to see so many people participate in the tour this morning where you had to stay wait a long time in the line? Yeah. Or you had to reserve a month in advance? <laughs> Actually, we have a... Uh, Twice as many people, or expecting twice as many people in afternoon to yes, go, because the maximum capacity is 500, and sometimes it really exceeds 500. And, yeah, and did you know that the English tour was available? No? So, so it was a nice surprise for you? Good, thank you. <laughs> Actually, this is a new program we started the last summer. Before that, we only had a tour available in Japanese, and those, those days they had an audio guide in other languages. Mm -hmm. But I think it's better in person. Yeah, yes. yeah. <laughs> okay. So, in front of you, here, okay, is a, it, a headquarter building of the Imperial Household Agency. It's the government organization that serves their majesty, the emperor and empress, and other members of the imperial family. Okay, agency assists the, assists the emperor in receiving official visitors, such as head of state, ambassadors and ministers from abroad and also assist in performing various ceremonial functions. Okay. Uh, building here, uh, the roof is made, made of copper. Okay. It was constructed in 1935. Okay. And from 1952 until 1969, the third floor of this building served as a temporary imperial palace, the provisional imperial palace, because the main palace, which was, uh, which was built during Meiji period, was burned down because of the bombing raids of the uh, great, uh, great Eastern Asia War, or called uh, World War II. Okay, and during the, uh, when it was used as a palace, this, uh, this happened uh, 60 years ago, this is the wedding. <laughs> this is the wedding day of their majesties uh, 60 years ago and during the zoom. You can see the rooms on the third floor 
was the palace, and they started the wedding parade from the entrance at the main entrance there. Okay, by the house drawn carriage. And today the tent is installed here. The, this is the provisional tent because the day after tomorrow and after that, so far on the 25th and 26th, we are having the uh, anniversary, 30th anniversary of His Majesty's en enthronement. Enthronement. So, for 30 years. So we have we um, installing. So normally you don't you don't have this view. You can just see the building. It's okay. So now we're going up towards the towards up the hill to see the palace, the imperial palace, the queue then. At the end of the street slope is quite deep, so be careful on the steps. And when you go up, if you look to the left, you can see a rather big gate. It's called Sakai Stemmon Gate. It's the official gate, big gate, used by the officials here. And it's called Sakai Stemmon because it's situated at the bottom of the hill, and it means Sakai Stemmon means bottom of the hill. Here under the big tree here. Do you know this tree? <laughs> they have a similar tree in your country. It's called Teaki in Japanese. Z e l k o b. Zelkova in English or Latin. <laughs> Zelkova. Z e l k o v a. Do you have a similar tree in your country? Maybe it's difficult to t to tell when all the leaves are falling. <laughs> but we have a three big. Okay, Aki, the Zekova tree is planted on the East Coast. Yeah, this is called East Coast, yeah? Now, in front of you is the, the palace, the kitchen. But let me talk about the palace rather in detail on the way back. We'll be passing through uh, on the way back, about 15 minutes. Of course, the other groups, the Chinese group and Japanese group, are just immediately behind us. So I don't have much time to talk about the palace now. Meanwhile, let me just talk about the lighting tower. Lighting tower, yeah? To the left hand side of the palace. Okay. <laughs> Made to look like needles of young pine trees, 50 meters tall. Does it look like a young pine tree? <laughs> it's called Matsunoto. And my colleague has a picture when it's lit at night. Looks like that. It's going to show you. Okay. Matsu, so the light, so it's called Matsunoto. It's the light it's called Matsunoto. Matsu is, <laughs> Matsu is a young pine tree. We have a young pine tree often used as a symbol of uh, auspicious sign, emblematic of great vitality or use or energy. Okay. And it was constructed during the same time as the construction of the palace, okay, through donations from the citizens. And so it meant to serve as nation's growth. And you see the ring like top at the tip of the spire? Can you see? It's meant to represent a bracelet called Kushiro. Kushiro. Bracelet called Kushiro, also found at three historic sites in Japan. Okay. Yes. Are we walking friends? <laughs> we love East Garden, Courtyard. You see the palace is very long, 160 meters long. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, it's, so it's Saturday today. So the screen is closed. Usually during the, you, uh, during the weekday it's open 
and you can get to see what's inside, right? <laughs> the reception rooms.
If you go as close as where he is standing now, you can see this statue. Please tell me. Okay. Very close. Yeah. That's a phoenix up there. I don't know if you can see it behind the building. It's called Zuzo. It's a lucky bird. It's supposed to be happiness. It's a sign of upcoming happiness. Okay. So, it's about, oh, it's more than two meters tall, 2.3 meters, and it weighs almost one ton. So, yes, it's quite heavy. It's a strong roof. Okay. It comes in a pair. So, there's another one on the other, other roof ridge, other side of the roof ridge. Okay. It, uh, it was made at the same time as the construction of the palace was completed in 1968. Okay. It was designed by an uh, artist called uh, Sasaki Shodo. Sasaki Shodo is the one who made it. Made of bronze. Around here, <laughs> okay. Okay, sorry to make you stop. Yeah, okay. now, now we just passed through uh, Nakamon Gate. This is called Nakamon Gate. Nakamon is the middle, the middle gate. We are now going to go on to the, to the iron bridge of the main gate. Okay, it stands at the height of 30 meters above the water, above moto, moat. Okay, and the during, during Edo period. People were technically not able to build a single bridge so high, it could start in meter above the moat. What they did was they built, they first built a, a bridge in wood, lower them, and built another bridge on top of it, so that the bridge was in two layers, so, so double layer bridge. Because it has a nickname, Nijubashi, so Niju means double, double layer, so, so Nijubashi is the nickname, and it's double layer bridge, okay? When you stand here, when you stand on the double layer bridge in Nijubashi, if you look to the left, you see another bridge lower down to the left. Also, called, is, also has a nickname Meganebashi. Megane means eyeglasses, you know why? Because the two, bot, two arches at the bottom of the bridge, okay, is with its reflection on water. Ne? On the surface of the water, it looks like eyeglasses. Okay? That's why it's called uh, uh, Meganebashi, but the actual name is the stone bridge of the main gate. Okay? Uh, it was completed uh, in, during Edo by uh, in stone, 188 uh, at, no, at the uh, during Meiji period actually because in wood in Edo period it was in wood but replaced by stone in 1887. Okay, I keep saying main gate, same on main gate because the main gate is at the at the end of the stone stone bridge. This is the main gate. This is the same as the most important gate of the of the entire imperial palace. Okay, I have to remind you, please don't step on the gravel or the stone gravel stone or the, uh, the sidewalk. I've stayed away from the sidewalk because for your uh, security is so it's dangerous if you lean over and drop glasses, drops yourself, your children. <laughs> <laughs> really, really uh, happened um, last, last summer. Uh, a participant fell, but not the boat, but uh, misstepped. On the sidewalk, he was uh, had an injury on the face. We had to call ambulance. He was taken to a hospital. And uh, that went that to happen today. But if you like to experience Japanese ambulance, they are free. <laughs> and Japan, how they treat you at Japanese uh, hospitals if you were insured, I'm not sure. How do you meet you at the other side of the
The light resembles resembles lilies, Lala lily. It's yeah, beautiful. Those lights, and I think it's still uh, need to have light bulb here. It um, so it's really a very rare sight because normally it's really uh, covered with light bulb like that. Shade, shade, mm. shade. Mm. They use LED now. <laughs> What did they use before? Just regular lights? Regular lights. Okay. How they put the they, they design? Because actually it was quite cl uh, the close to sea, to the bay. And they had to, to put soil and make a moat. But uh, it, uh, was co the moat was complete in the uh, beginning of the 17th century. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, this white, white ball building, across, you can see across from the bridge, it's okay. so, uh, said to be the most beautiful tower. Beautiful tower, torrent, the uh, yes, keep remaining uh, from Edo, former Edo Castle. Okay. Legend has it that it was brought all the way from Kyoto. There is a castle there is a castle in Kyoto called Fushimi, Fushimi Castle. And by the order of third Tokugawa Shogun, Tokugawa Iemitsu, it was dismantled in Kyoto, Fushimi Castle, and brought all the way to Edo by boat and reassembled here. It happened in sixteen twenty two. So it's been standing there yeah, seven years. And because of its beauty, it looks Beautiful, do you think? People ask me if it has it ever been a resident or, or castle, anybody lived in it. Actually, never. It was built only for the defense purpose. They used to keep weapons, yes, and the warriors were yes, the guarding. The two story part is called uh, Yagura. Yagura means tower, keep, keep tower. And the one story part is called Tamon. Tamon means the defense house. Okay? So, altogether, it, it was serving. Uh, the purpose of defense. Okay. And have you stood already outside on the palace's outer garden, looking inside? Have you not yeah. you did that? Okay, it's really so it was like this. This really is the symbolic image of the Imperial Palace. When we when Japanese people think about the Imperial Palace we think about this image. And we are part of this image now. Yes. <laughs> okay. Let me make a U turn back towards the palace. I don't know. Oh, you mean on the roof right? This is called Shachihoko. Shachihoko is the dragon head fish. You also see on the roof range of Japanese temples and castles. Yes. It's supposed to be uh, well, the sign of um, uh, the figure to protect the buildings from fire. Because being a half, half marine animal, it's a zoe Hope you're enjoying this tour. Hope you can hear it all because I'm just going to upload it uh, fully for you to look at and uh, go backwards and forwards as you wish. Our tour guide's doing a great job. Ah! 
souvenir. <laughs> I need to put the ring on it. Well, because I didn't find it. You look much smaller if I if I made I made it enlarged. So easier for you to see. <laughs> Those are lanterns. Lanterns. Coming from Adidas, posters. Stone, stoneware, mm -hmm. stone, 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 So is it the Emperor's birthday? Whose birthday? Uh, it's a, he's, he's in the, in the Highness, the uh, Grand Prince. Big party? Yeah. Party? Party! Yes, yes. <laughs> you, <laughs> it's but not, not, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we stay here. Okay, <laughs> stop here. Special camera. Special camera, okay. <laughs> Okay, so here's the 360, everybody. You can turn the camera around and look at the camera. Very high-tech. <laughs> Very high-tech. <laughs> okay, almost everybody here. Okay, so this last building is the Imperial Palace, the Kyudan. Okay, and during Tokugawa Shogunate, this area was known as Nishinomaru. Nishinomaru, this western compound, served as living quarters for retired shoguns and their families. Okay. In 1868, Emperor Meiji moved from Kyoto to here. Since then, the former Edo Castle has been home to Japan's um, emperors. Okay. In 1888, the wooden Kyoden Palace was completed the Meiji Palace on the very spot. This is the uh, uh, entrance, main entrance of that uh, old uh, Meiji Palace. Okay. Like I said, uh, so, but, Mother is, eh? So Meiji Palace was home to three, uh, three imperial generations. Emperor Meiji, <laughs> Emperor Meiji to the left side. That's a picture of Emperor Meiji and Emperor Meiji's son, Emperor Taisho. And behind, behind is uh, to the left is uh, Emperor Meiji's grandson, Emperor Showa. And Emperor Showa is known as Emperor Hirohito. Overseas, okay. And our current emperor is the son of Emperor Hirohito, Emperor Showa, and the great grandson of Emperor Meiji. And his name is Emperor Akihito. But for Japanese people, we don't have custom of calling the emperor by his name. So instead of calling the emperor Akihito, we never say that. We say that his, his Majesty or Your Majesty Emperor. Okay. And our Majesty, the Emperor, His Majesty the Emperor, is 125th Emperor of Japan. The first emperor of Japan, Jinmu, became the emperor uh, in 660 BC. So that means that if this year is the 2,679th imperial year, uh, with the, it means the imperial line, with the same imperial line, with the same bloodline. So it really is a long, his, uh, Japan really has a long history as being just one monarchy. Okay? So, and like I said, the Meiji Palace was burned down because uh, during the war, and now the, this is a picture from the from the sky, and this current uh, the a very concrete current field, the uh, current, current uh, imperial palace Kyudan was completed in 1968. It has seven complexes. Okay, in front of us is Chowa, then it's, it's the host the reception. Okay, and at the left hand side uh, of the Chowa, there you see the entrance, the main entrance, this is the school Minami Kuruma is said. Okay, that's the main entrance where the majesties will await the official uh, head of state, arrival of the official head of state. Okay, and And here on the balcony, uh, is a, the balcony is fixed at the fence here. Okay, this is a picture taken on the 2nd of January. Okay, so for the new year, and last year on the 23rd was the em em Emperor's birthday. So on the birthday, Empress birthday on the 2nd of January for the new year, people gather here from across Japan to, uh, to assemble here. Okay, and those occasions, uh, Emperor and his family appear on the balcony and we, we exchange wishes and the Emperor will make a dress and we listen to it and just wave flags. Okay. 
Okay. And this year, on the 2nd of January, we had 150,000 people visited in just one day. And where you are standing here is the front, it's the very, very front. People, people who wanted to, come, to stand in the front, they had to, they had to stay overnight. <laughs> the previous, they came from the previous night. So it was a very, very long wait. And yes, and on the 2nd of January, Emperor and his family appeared seven times during this uh, here. And so the first appearance is 10 o'clock, and the last appearance is 4 o'clock, so seven times. So the people were just uh, going. And underneath where we are standing now is uh, the underneath the parking. Okay. So 120 cars uh, can be parked here. And the stone used here for the like stone, a softer than normal stone, okay, coming from uh, Kagawa Prefecture, it's called Yuraishi, it's an andesite rock, softer than the normal stone. So during the mass gathering of people, if somebody would fall, he or she wouldn't get the so seriously injured. So it means that you don't have to try now. So this uh, this was a new palace was designed by the architect called Yoshimura Jojo. Okay. And actually I have met a but uh, the participant like you coming from the United States, she told me her husband's grandfather, so the grandfather in law, was in charge of supplying copper. He was working for the US steel company. And during five years of the construction of the palace, he was staying at the Imperial Hotel near here and is taking charge of the supplying copas from, 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 the, from all of the world. And later he received a medal from the Showa Emperor. And there are many features I like, uh, so unique about the palace. But one of the features I really like is this drainage. You can see, you see the drainage hanging it's like a bucket chain, you see? Bucket chain hanging from the roof. This is for the rain trainers. And, and this lady is asking, what are those yellow things? <laughs> These yellow things are lanterns. Lanterns. I hope I didn't leave anybody on the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> well, otherwise, uh, they can join the other group. <laughs> okay, so, okay, we just walk around the palace, yeah? Okay, this is the, and this entrance is called Kita Kurumasu Marasu. <laughs> Kita Kurumasu is a nose carriage post. Remember the, our main entrance we saw? At the other side of the other side of the palace of Chowa then. Do you remember the name? I said it very quickly. <laughs> so, Minari Kurama is the South Carriage Porch. Okay, this is North Carriage Porch. The South Carriage Porch is the uh, official official entrance. And that's okay. This is a picture of a horse drawn carriage arriving at the South South uh, Carriage Porch. Okay? What happened is there's a newly appointed when newly appointed ambassadors arrive in Japan. They have to present their credentials, okay? So their majesties, on those occasions, they have two options. They can be picked up by a limousine but at, at their residence, or they have to come to Tokyo Station and picked up by a horse-drawn carriage. <laughs> Normally, they prefer to be picked up by a horse-drawn carriage, okay? <laughs> the horse-drawn carriage is a 
convenience uh, coming from the Tokyo station, uh, Gyoko Street, Sorry. and arrive and go on two bridges. Take two bridges and arrive East Courtyard and uh, this descent at the Edsas carriage. And this is a picture of a wedding of a Bukra and the prince, prince, uh, Princess Ayako of Takamado. She got married about three months ago. Okay. Well, the reason why he's showing that this is on a special occasion, celebrations like this, people can come here, arrive here, people can come here to sign their names. Then on those occasions, we use this entrance, this North Carriage Road. And like uh, officials, like um, you, uh, Prime Minister, Prime Minister Abe, and other officials, when they come back from overseas visits, they have to record their visits, pay respect to their majesties. On those occasions, they use this entrance. And people who are attending, uh, coming here to attend the ceremonies, you, you also use this entrance. And so the 25th uh, and uh, today, yes, uh, there will be a reception going on to them. Uh, today there will be a reception going on to celebrate the, his, his Imperial Highness, the Crown Prince, Naruhito's 59th birthday is today. And next year, he's going to be, uh, he's going to ascend to the throne. Okay, his Crown Prince is ascend to the throne because our, our current emperor is stepping down. So next year, today will be the birthday of the emperor. <laughs> Okay. Now we are going to uh the So do all of the like the crown prince already live here? Actually this is the residence. The Queen's Crown Prince and other the family reside at the other other estate called Akasaka. It's about one kilometer to the west. And I can show you, and, and their majesties also, they, they don't reside uh, inside. They have a residence about 400 meters to the west here, actually. And here, it is called Chowa, uh, home maiden, and you don't see much of the, the side. Um, beyond is the kitchen and the banquet room. This is when the uh, king and queen of Belgium when they came to Japan, we hosted a dinner. This, this, we have a banquet room just beyond this, beyond this part. <laughs> it's called Homeda, Homeda. And this bridge here is called Momiji Watari, the Maple Bridge, which connects the palace and the household agency building. And also it's connected at both of the basement, here and there. And now we are okay. Next to Lensui, the, the rooms in the Lensui is a complex beyond this store here. The yeah, Lensui Lensui are used to host the tea ceremonies and luncheon for guests of honor. So beyond this store is the Lensui. And you notice, so you can see the beautifully trimmed kurumatsu, black pine tree. If you are interested in bonsai, you might like this area, <laughs> you might like this. It's taken care of by gardeners. Normally they use only the hands here, don't use much uh, machine. Okay. We have about 5,000 kilometers of black bunches planted on the palace ground. And remember the bird, the story so. As I told you, it comes in a pair. You can see the other pair on this side, on the bridge. Okay. Actually, those birds serve as lightning rod, so protecting ah, buildings yeah. from lightning. Yeah, we are walking down Yamashita Dori. Yamashita means the bottom. The street, the street runs beneath the mountain. Yamashita Dori, because it is the street is running, running under the, beneath the mountain. Okay, okay. <laughs> 